Welcome to Elector Online. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at the ephemeris parameters. Remember the contents of subframe two and three, which contain the ephemeris data of a particular satellite, whatever satellite is transmitting that data. So every, tra every satellite transmits its own ephemeris data. So here, what we want to do is kind of take a look at the sizing of those parameters. So first, we take a look at the IODE, which is what we call the issue of data ephemeris. That is an integer number, typically between 1 and I think it's 500 or something like that, which indicates which set of ephemeris data we're dealing with. In ideal conditions, we'd get six new sets every 24 hours, each set covering a period of four hours during the day. So four times six is 24 hours, and then the next day we get the next set of, of uh, six sets of four hours and so forth. And so that way the IODE would only oscillate between the first to the sixth set. But we also send additional sets for additional days in case we cannot transmit a new ephemeris data so that the satellite will have ephemeris data stored up for upwards of about 72 days in case it is necessary. So we need an IODE to indicate which data set that we're using and that we are receiving. The next one is the delta N, which is the mean motion difference. Uh, that means it's the difference between the mean motion and that would be the, the expected motion and the calculated motion. There's a difference between the two. We have a theoretical calculated motion and we want to know what the delta is between that and the mean motion. Notice we're talking about very small numbers. We contain it within 16 bits, but the 16 bits have an LSB of 2 to the minus 43, essentially comes down to about 2 times 10 to the minus 11 degrees per second. So we're talking about very, very tiny changes, difference in the mean motion. Here we have the mean anomaly at the reference time. Uh, the mean anomaly is kind of a word that you know, you think, oh, it's, it's anomalies and being anomalous. No, no, it's actually a measurement, an angle measurement at the reference time. And, oh, I just forgot what the reference position is. So, but it's, a, it's an, an angle difference between some point and the point at some time. It's a fraction, I would say, it gives you a fraction of the period of one complete orbit around the Earth. Notice that there's 32 bits associated with that. The smallest bit, LSB, is 2 to the minus 31, which is 4 times 10 to the minus 10 semicircles per second. You'll see a lot of the units is semicircles per second. The semicircle, of course, represents a half orbit. Essentially, a half orbit is the half that a receiver could pick up when the satellite is essentially visible, although obviously the first few degrees on the horizon, typically satellites aren't picked up until you're about 5 or 10 degrees above the horizon. But nevertheless, the units we use there is semicircles per second or essentially half the total orbit around the Earth. But again, we're talking about very, very small units, 4.6 times 10 to the minus 10. And you'll see this repeated in a number of places where the units used is semicircles per second or semicircles. The next one is the eccentricity, and that's of course the difference between being a perfectly circular orbit and a elliptical orbit. And the greater the eccentricity, the more it's elliptical rather than circular. And notice that the LSB is 2 to the minus 33, which is a very, very tiny number. So we want to be able to very precisely know the difference between the the orbit of the satellite, which is, of course, a, an ellipse, versus what it would be if it was circular, and we do want to keep track of that. The next one is the semi-major axis. It's actually the square root of the semi-major axis, and notice that the units are in square root of meters, and the smallest LSB is 2 to the minus 19. Notice it's a very, a lot of bits associated with that, but the LSB is actually relatively large. It's 1.907 times 10 to the minus 6. That makes a lot of sense because obviously the semi-major axis in meters, it's 150 billion meters for the semi-major axis. So obviously we need a lot of bits and we can all the way go down to the nearest, wow, 1 times 10 to the minus 6 time, uh, square root meters. Uh, that would be 1 millionth of a square root of a meter. So yeah, we do have very small, precise changes in the semi-major axis. The time of ephemeris. Of course, we want to know where in that four-hour period we are, and we want to compare that to a fixed 
number, I think is the TLC that we compare it to. And we want to make sure that we're, we, the numbers are matching in such a way that we're dealing with the correct data set. So this is kind of a rough number. Notice we only have 16 bits associated with it. 2 to the 4th is the LSB, which is a 16 second period. So we're not looking for accuracy here. We're simply saying, are we dealing with the same time period such that we're dealing with the correct issue of data ephemeris, in other words, the right data ephemeris data set. And if the time doesn't match, if we're off by, you know, four hours worth of seconds, then you realize, oh, I'm, I'm looking at the wrong time of ephemeris, and then we have to have a cutover to a new data set in order to be able to then properly figure out where exactly the satellite is. The next variable is called the longitude of ascending node of the orbit plane. So we have the orbit plane, so obviously we have the uh, what we call the, the equatorial plane, and then we have the orbit plane will be some angle reference to the equatorial plane, and we know that um, the, we can have a slight difference in that longitude of ascending node, as we call it, so that would be the location where we have the ascending node, where the satellite comes across that plane, and we need to be able to keep track of those small changes. LSB 2 to the minus 31, we have 32 bits there, and again, it's in terms of semicircles, so you see the same unit popping up all the time when we're trying to make adjustments for a particular orbit parameter. Here we have the inclination angle at reference time. Uh, so at some particular moment in time, we want to know what the inclination is, and of course, that can be different. We need to be able to keep track of that. Again, the LSB is a very tiny number, 4.657 times 10 to the minus 10 semicircles. So it's actually a small segment of a semicircle that we want to be able to keep track of as it changes, right? So we want to know the exact precise uh, angle of inclination. The next one is the argument of perigee. That's again one of those names where you wonder, well, what does that mean? So perigee, of course, is the point of the satellite orbit where it's closest to the Earth. We want to know what the angle is between a reference point and the perigee. And of course, that angle can vary slightly. We want to be able to keep track of that. And so we have adjustments of, of 2 times 10 to the minus 31. And again, we want to know that angle extremely, extremely precisely. Uh, then we have the rate of right ascension, so the rate at which it rises above the horizon, so to speak. And notice that the LSB is an extremely tiny number, 1.137 times 10 to the minus 13. That's because it's semicircles per second. Now we're talking about a rate, not just a, a segment of the semicircle, but a rate at which you're moving through the sky. And we want to be able, of course, express that in very tiny numbers. I think if you convert that to degrees per second, you'll end up with uh, this number right here. So that would be degrees per second, that is semicircles per second. So you get an idea of what that rate is. So we want to keep very precise track of the rate ascension of the satellite above the horizon. Here we have I dot, which is simply I with a dot over it. I represents the rate of inclination angle, and then how fast that, oh, I'm sorry. I is the inclination angle, and I dot is the rate of change of the inclination angle. We want to be able to keep track of it again at very, very tiny, minute numbers in semicircles per second, very, very tiny difference. So again, as you can see, when you look at this table, that all the parameters are precise to very minute little numbers, and that is being kept track of, and so we want to know exactly all the various motions and position parameters and time parameters of every satellite in the ephemeris data to the extreme minute accuracy in order to know exactly where that satellite is at. And finally, we have what we call some amplitude of correction terms. There's six of them, and notice they deal with latitude, orbit radius, and angle of inclination. And I didn't put the specifics down, but again, these are the six uh, coefficients or amplitudes that are plugged into an equation to calculate the variations in those three parameters. So bottom line, these parameters that we've seen before, these are what we call orbital parameters of the ephemeris, which is the very accurate data associated with each satellite. And based upon the LSBs, you can see that it keeps track of minute, minute changes in the various parameters down to very, very accurate numbers. And that 
is how we know exactly where each satellite is based upon these calculated numbers. And that is how it's done.